Alright guys, in this video, I'm going to show you a step-by-step -step guide on how I make full kids' tale story videos in just a few steps. And you know what? It's fully automated right now with my system. But don't worry, even if you don't use my system, you can still follow along and do it yourself using only AI tools like ChatGPT and Grok AI. First thing first, I'm going to explain why you should choose this niche by doing keyword research using my Google Ads account. This is the only tool I use for demand research. It's totally free, and it gives you exactly the data you need. Let's open Google Keyword Planner. Then, you're going to click on Discover New Keywords. Now you can type some main keywords like stories for kids, bedtime stories for kids, or even a specific topic like Little Red Riding Hood or Three Little Pigs. When you check the results, look at the average monthly searches. You can see the demand is huge. And if you look at the total traffic, including related keywords, you can see this chart showing over 10 million in total. Now I can do another search for my niche focusing on YouTube automation and AI automation. And as you can see, the average monthly traffic there is only around 200,000. The only problem with this niche is that you have to turn on the option to tell YouTube your videos are made for kids and you'll mostly upload kids' content on your channel. When you do that, your RPM can be lower, usually around $0.5 to $5. But compared to the huge demand, the amount of content you can make, and the effort you put in, and if you actually love this kind of content and you want to make it, it's really worth trying. One year ago, I created a channel in the same niche. I posted around four videos, and it brought me about 60,000 views. At that time, each video took me at least three to seven full working days to finish. I was struggling with waiting for image generation, struggling to keep character consistency in every single scene. It was painful, but now I can tell you, I can create a better result with way less effort. The steps are actually very simple right now, but the quality is still high enough to help you stay away from problems like not getting monetized, getting demonetized, or getting shadow banned. If you don't know me, I'm Gary. Over the past year, I've grown my channel to more than 25,000 subscribers, and I created Gary Studio to help my members grow on YouTube with AI content. Now before we jump into the main part of this video, let's watch the full demo video I made using this system. Once upon a time, there was a kind little girl who always wore a red hooded cloak, so everyone called her Little Red Riding Hood. One morning, in a small cottage, her mother packed a basket with bread, fruit, and cookies. She called to her daughter to come closer and gently explained that grandmother was feeling sick and needed the food to help her feel better. Little Red Riding Hood happily agreed, saying she would take the basket right away because she loved her grandmother very much. Her mother then warned her to go straight to grandmother's house, not to leave the forest path, and not to talk to strangers because the forest could be dangerous. Little Red Riding Hood promised to obey, took the basket, kissed her mother goodbye, and walked off toward the deep, dark forest. As she walked along the path, she noticed the birds singing and the pretty flowers by the side of the trail. She felt brave and thought the forest was not so scary after all. From behind the trees, a big wolf watched her. He stepped out in front of her and greeted her politely. Yeah, to make a video like that, Let's begin from ChatGPT so I can guide you to create the script. For scripting this kind of content, just use my basic prompt. You can change the topic and any famous story title, and you can also change the total words to any length you want. In this example, I use 2,000 words, so I can create a voiceover and a video length of around 15 minutes. That's already enough for you to start. For me, don't try to start with a super long video. What I recommend is always focus on quality and learn the full process first. Now, if you want to know how I create prompts by myself, it's actually pretty simple. First, I create a short prompt like this. Create a good prompt for writing a children's fairy tale, like Little Red Riding Hood or The Three Little Pigs. Include a place where I can replace the story title with any title I want. Then, if the prompt is too long, too many inputs, or includes things I don't want, I prompt again like, keep it concise, only the title and total word count are needed as input. After that, I got the final prompt, and this is exactly the prompt I used before. Once I have the script ready, I can generate the voiceover. You can copy part of the script or the full script, depending on how long your voiceover is. For now, I'm going to use a short part of the script, and I'll paste it into 11 labs. 
For the voice, I'm going to pick Lily. For the model, I suggest using 11 V3. It's really high quality and sounds more lifelike now, but it will use about 2x credits. After the voiceover is generated, just download it to your local PC, and then we're ready for the next steps. Now just open Gary Studio. First, click on Storyboards and Render. Then on the right side, click Create Storyboard. Now you're going to see this modal. In here, just browse to your voiceover file that you generated from 11 Labs. This is a very important step, because after this, your voiceover will be transcribed into segments with correct timestamps. And when we combine that with the automation workflow inside the app, Gary Studio can generate images and later videos that match the voiceover exactly. I explained this in my previous video when I did the stick figure tutorial, so you can check that video if you want more detail. Video if you want more detail. Now, you're going to see this option here. This controls the segment length, which also controls how many scenes you'll have in the whole video. If you want fewer scenes, you can type something like 4 or 6 here. That means each scene will last at least 4 or 6 seconds. Then click Save, and your storyboard will be created. After it's created, it will show at the top of your storyboard list. If you right-click on any storyboard, you can duplicate, rename, or delete it anytime. For now, you won't see any images yet. When you click into the storyboard, it will look like this, basically empty. Now I'm going to click on Script and Image, and I'll guide you step by step on how to generate all the images and videos. To do this, first thing first, just turn on this option. Then, you should see all your storyboards show up here again. For now, just reselect the storyboard you just created at the top by double-clicking on it. Then, in the Image Prompt box below, you can type something very simple, like 3D Pixar Kid Tales. That's it. Of course, you can add more detail if you want, but you don't need to overthink it at the beginning. If you already designed your characters, you can also turn on the reference image options. Right now, the app even allows you to upload multiple images, so you can create a video with multiple characters. After that, just click Generate, and Gary Studio will run in the background and generate all the images in your storyboard for you. Once all images are generated, go back to Storyboards and Render. Now you'll see the storyboard has a thumbnail. Just click on it, and you'll see all the images displayed right here. And there are already a lot of features integrated. When you right-click on each segment, or even in the main preview, you can animate it to video. You can view variations, and you can also view all metadata like the script segment, timestamp, text-to-image prompt, text-to-video prompt, thread ID. All of this is generated by Gary Studio during the image generation step. On the top, you can render via After Effects with basic motion on each segment and transitions. And I'm going to make this feature even more powerful by adding more options in the next releases. You can also do local render, which is faster, but it won't have the same quality as After Effects rendering. You can click History to see your render history, and click Validate to validate the storyboard. And in the gear icon, I also integrated extra tools that give you more control when something goes wrong. So you can fix... Now, let's move on to the coolest part of this video, animating the whole storyboard in just a few minutes. For faceless creators, Grok AI animation is basically a gift. It lets you generate a lot of HD quality videos from images totally free. Even with a free account, you can generate a lot of videos per day. It's super fast, and the animation quality is honestly really impressive. If you do it directly on Grok AI, it's simple. You upload your image, and Grok AI will automatically generate a video for you without needing any prompt. After the video is generated, you can click Upscale to get HD quality. But the problem is, you still have to repeat that process again and again for every single image. That's why in Gary Studio, you don't need to do it manually. To animate the whole storyboard, this is what I'm going to do. I'll select all segments, hold Shift and select everything. Then right-click and choose Animate to Video. Then you'll see this modal, where you can choose which model you want to use, like VO3, Grok AI, or other models. Next, you'll see this checkbox. If you don't check it, Gary Studio will use your own Grok AI account to animate all the videos for you. If you do check it, the app will generate all videos using my pool accounts. Right now, there are about 30 accounts available, and I'm going to add more, up to 100 accounts, very soon. And it's not just Grok AI. The same idea will also be for ChatGPT+. 
You can generate all images using the ChatGPT model instantly and totally free through the pool system. After you click animate, just wait a little bit. In around two minutes, you'll have all your videos animated. If you don't like the result, you can regenerate variations until you're happy. And once everything is ready, you can click here to render via After Effects or render via local render if you want. All of this is free when you use my system and it's only available privately for my members. And there are tons of other things you can unlock inside the community too, not just Gary Studio. You also can unlock more than seven hours of private courses where I teach all my skills for AI content generation. You can learn how to make realistic talking avatars like me, access my full assets library with tons of ready prompts and image styles, and also watch demos I made for you to get inspiration from. You'll also learn YouTube content strategy for both long form and short form, and you can get direct support from me and other real creators inside the community. But if you don't wanna learn and you just want some magical thing to happen without effort, then honestly, it's not suitable for you. All right, guys, that's pretty much it for this video. Now let's watch five feature demos my team made in the past few weeks in different niches like philosophy, horror, Bible, and cartoon. You can watch them and get inspired from the results. Everything is high quality because low quality is not what I'm here to teach. If you like this video, please share it with others and subscribe to my channel. See you in the next video. One quiet afternoon, the young girl was happily playing in her bedroom, lost in the colors of her toys. Suddenly, her mother's voice called out from the kitchen. Sweetheart, come down and help me. Excited, the girl smiled and dashed out of her room, her footsteps light as she raced down the hallway. But just as she passed the cupboard under the stairs, its door creaked open. A hand shot out, grabbing her wrist and pulling her inside. She gasped only to find herself staring into the eyes of her mother. But her mother was right there, crouched in the dark, her face pale and eyes wide with fear. In a hoarse whisper, she said, Don't go into the kitchen. I heard it too. Have you ever noticed how some people seem to have an almost supernatural control over the environment around them without saying a word? They don't shout. They don't beg. They simply withdraw. And suddenly, everything changes. The energy shifts. People start to question, to chase after, to feel. Now, imagine if you did the same, if you stopped reacting immediately to everything, if you chose silence instead of the automatic response, retreat instead of explosion. What do you think would happen? That's where the point lies. When you stop being always available, emotionally, physically, psychologically, the world around you goes into crisis because people are used to controlling you through your reactions through your impulses, through your predictability. But the day you choose to withdraw, the game changes. And those who thought they knew you realize they know absolutely nothing about you. Titus emphasized the importance of having clear, firm purposes. He said, difficulties show a person's character and the greater the difficulty, the more glory in surmounting it. This isn't just a philosophical musing, it's a call to action. When you have a firm purpose, it's like having a compass that guides you through life's tumultuous seas. This purpose doesn't appear out of nowhere. It's crafted through moments of deep reflection on what truly matters to you. It's not just about career goals or personal achievements, but also about the principles and values you want to dedicate your life to. What do you stand for? What kind of person do you aspire to be? These are the questions you need to answer to find your firm purpose. Once you identify your purpose, it acts as an anchor, grounding you amidst the chaos. My dad once told me about his luckiest escape. It was the late 1980s. He was 25, carrying a heart still raw from a breakup. He rented a lonely cabin near the edge of the woods, far from the hustle and bustle of the city, just chasing quiet. The landlord gave him the keys, then disappeared down the long, deserted road. That first day was peaceful, silent, so deep you could almost hear the trees breathing. But as night fell, something changed. The curtains were drawn, though he swore he'd left them open. The bedroom felt wrong, heavy. His gut whispered, leave here now. So he did. Clutching the key, he threw his bag in the car and drove until he found a neon-lit motel 
where he checked in for the night. The next day, police cars filled the area, sirens echoing through the woods. The homeowner had also heard the news and was there. Inside the cabin, they found a muddy shovel on the sofa and Polaroids scattered across the bed, photos taken of my dad the night before. Town of Smearby, where smiles have gone extinct and winter never ends, Harold Finch, the most famously lazy mailman. The townsfolk are grumpy, the children don't play, and every Christmas the decorations go up out of guilt, not joy. But one day, Harold receives an official letter. Deliver all undelivered mail before the end of the year or be terminated. Harold wearily opened the old warehouse, sifted through dusty letters, and found a single yellowed envelope labeled, please. Inside is a message from a girl named Elsie, asking someone, anyone, to tell her father she forgives him. Harold searched everywhere for the letters recipient at Maggie's Bakery, the toy store, the icy tavern. Then, something remarkable happened. The whole town got involved. People brought their own unsent letters, apologies, love notes, memories long buried, and shared them with Harold. On Christmas Eve, from the top of the clock tower, Harold releases hundreds of letters into the sky. They rise like glowing snow, lighting up the night and softening every heart in Smearby.